Welcome to the Nutty Knitty Sisters podcast, a podcast about knitting, spinning, and fiber-related creations. We're your hosts, Julie and Judith. You can find us on social media as Nutty Knitty Sisters on Instagram, at Nutty Knitty Sisters on YouTube, and you can email us at nuttyknittysisters at gmail.com. If you're watching for the first time, welcome, and thanks for joining us. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back, and thanks for returning. We'd appreciate it if you'd click the subscribe button below so you don't miss any broadcasts. Click that bell, you'll be notified as soon as new videos are loaded. Now, grab your knitting, find a comfy spot, and and let's let's get a little nutty! Hello! (laughs) Welcome to episode four of the Nutty Knitty Sisters podcast. It's been a while since we've been on. It's been a crazy holiday and new year, um, but we're back, ready to show our, our show off our projects. Not much for me. Not a lot. Poor Jules. <laughs> Again, busy. Yeah. Um. So updates. What's new in your world, Julie? Oh, what's new in my world? I don't know. Just. Settling into a new year, new decade, I guess. Not a yeah. lot of excitement. Nothing changing in your world? No. No. Chickens are doing fine. I was a little worried this morning. They, they've got a heat mat in there, but I was a little worried to go out this morning. I didn't know yeah. if I had popsicle chicken sticks when I got they're, out there. They're pretty resilient. I don't yeah. I don't heat my coop, and they do fine. Yeah. They do absolutely <laughs> fine. Um, Depending on your breed. You have good breed. You have good cold weather breeds. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, he, he, your rooster still cuckoo-doodling? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's, he really doesn't know what he is. <laughs> it's funny. Because we have one chick, chicken, I still call it a chick, um, that when it came in the shipment, it got injured somehow. It's got a funky neck mm-hmm. thing going on. A little bit disabled. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he, he acts more like a mother hen <laughs> to that little bird than Aww, anything. I so mean, he's a big old teddy bear. He is big, fuzzy. He's, oh, he's big, big and fluffy. He's he's very much a rooster. He does his job. He's a good rooster, not aggressive at all. But he is just like a mother hen to that yeah. chicken. It's so funny. Which will be good because he'll <laughs> uh, like when if you have predator problems. Yeah, he'll be protective. Yeah, he's got that kind of bond with. With the rest of them. Yep. Cool. <laughs> um, anything else for you? I'm going to be, well, I don't know if it's, it's good for me. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Send hubby away for a month. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. At least myself for a month. <laughs> so jealous. I'm so jealous. So you get to go, you get to be away from your hubby for a month. Mm-hmm. Mine's going to be incapacitated for a month. Oh, we'll be polar opposites for a mm. month. <laughs> I'll be visiting you. <laughs> Here, honey, have another mm. hydrocodone. Yep. Here's a pain pill. I'll be back in a couple hours. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, that's the biggest, that's the biggest news in my world is yep. my husband is having knee surgery on the 31st. <clears throat> So, and he's, he's quite bummed about it. Not only the surgery, but, um, a friend of his at work, um, lost his battle with cancer and his, um, memorial service is the same day as the surgery. And oh. so, and my, he can't put it off. He's, oh. he's hobbling pretty hard. So, uh. so that's our January. Um, other than that, same old, same old gonna have a little FOMO this weekend. Huh? Yeah. <gasps> I know. Yeah. yeah. Vogue Knitting Live is this weekend. Yeah. I'm so bummed. I would have <laughs> loved to have gone, but yeah. the, not in the, the cards. The year that I decide I just can't do it. And how oh, he's there with our oh, family. Oh, no. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Her mom, Virginia, she's such a sweetheart. She's there with her. Yeah. The boys and Charlie. The I whole don't want to Van Damley. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm kind of bumming. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I would have loved to meet Ann Frost from... Yeah. I thought... Yeah. I thought I knew how podcast. I yep. just... I love her podcast. They're so... Mm-hmm. Um, 
informative mm-hmm. and they're so relaxing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's just got a very soothing voice yeah. and she has the little musical interludes and I just love it. Yep. Um, and we'll talk more about her later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it for updates, right? Yep. All right. Um, so let's go into our segments. Um, first one is Devoured Nuts. Finished objects. Julie, do you have finished objects? I do have a couple. I'll let you go first. Yay. Yay. Finally, I get to say. Yay. I have finished objects. <laughs> is one of them the Philomena? No. <laughs> Had to we're going to get up, didn't we're, you? I'm going we'll to bring get, up we'll every get podcast. We'll to moldy nuts. Just hold on. <laughs> okay, so first is... Fingerless mitts. My grandson requested red fingerless mitts. They're awesome. So they're done. The only request he's made is, these are a, a men's pattern for fingerless gloves, and I was shocked that they fit him, but he's not fully a man. He's 13, <laughs> and so the thumb is a little bit long. It's actually pretty much the same length as the fingers. He may grow into the thumb. Yeah. <laughs> And I probably, he's requested I make the thumb a little shorter. So mm-hmm. I think I'm going to have to take ribbing off and just bind off and not have ribbing on the thumb. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah. Because I think for the men's gloves, the way that they fit, I think that on a man's hand, which is big, these would, would come way down like that. And so then this would also come way down. But right now his hands are smaller so it's coming right up to the yeah. thumb here. Yeah. And he says it's not quite as comfortable as he'd like. So I will fix that for him. But at least they're done. Love them. And <laughs> these are huge. Hold on. Let's zoom yeah. back. You might have to zoom out back. for this. <laughs> <laughs> these are for my, <laughs> wow. my lobsterman son-in-law. Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> and they are big. He has an 11 inch foot, and that's 11 inches. Um, but he does wear them over his regular socks um, rather than just wearing these. So, plenty of room there <laughs> for the other socks. Um, I have made him another pair, and Monster. these are made like those were. I so. love that. Is that um, Briggs and Little? It is Briggs and Little. I Tell love me. the color. Yeah, I like it too. It's, it's actually got. Almost like some flecks of black. Yep, it's got like like gray. gray and black, and then it's almost a purple blue in some places. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, I like that. All my Briggs and Little is black and gray. Yeah, that's all my husband his wears. last ones were the black and gray <clears throat> ones, but and I might have enough of this to make me a pair. Ooh, exciting! <laughs> I love that. It's a very it's a working yarn. Yep. It's but it's not I very mean, warm. This was it's not much itchy. more. No, it's not itchy, but it was a it was much more stiff, and yeah. so probably you would say kind of scratchy before I blocked it. Yeah. Now it's just you can feel how sturdy it is, but it's not scratchy. I would totally. I would. Boy, you can't put that in the dryer though. I don't know if I could wear it against my neck. Yeah. But as far as like on my hands, on feet. my feet, yeah, no problem. Yeah, my husband loves. That yarn. Yep. It's I good made stuff. A couple pairs. Can't beat the price either for mm-hmm. quality. Man. What is it, like eight bucks a skein or something yeah. like that? Crazy. And that took that didn't even take a whole two skeins. Yeah. For both of those. That's a deal. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. That's my finished. That's your finished? Yep. All right. Um, I have two. Only two. <laughs> um, so the first one was my Advent calendar shawl. So this is yarn by Farm Girl Fibers. This was her advent calendar. What was it called? Um, a, f- a few of my favorite things. Mm-hmm. Advent calendar. Oops. I switched the camera and mm-hmm. it's messing me up. So there is her details. So she did a few of my favorite things. Advent calendar. And... Um, there was a video I posted on here um, after our holiday thing of me, all, all the opening of all of the things. <laughs> and this was the shawl or wrap that I made. So this is the Adventuring Wrap by oh, Amda oh. O'Brien. And it's just a little bit of every one of the 24 skeins. 
Um, when I first started it, the cast on was 360, but I ended up running out of the first, um, <laughs> the first yarn before I got to the little eyelets here. So I ended up ripping the first yarn out and re-knitting it with 260 instead of 360 cast on. And it's perfect. Um, you can wear it as a bit of a wrap or I like to just wear it like kind of like a scarf or a cowl and it's perfect. And there's so many colors, these beautiful, beautiful um, minis that you can wear with anything. anything. Absolutely yep. anything. It's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And her yarn is so, so unbelievably soft mm. and gorgeous, beautiful. Mm. I, I felt like every skein, the name, fit the skein oh, so yeah. well. It yeah. was it was really fun. So that is number one. And I didn't do this um, as I opened the yarn. I did it after it was all done because I wanted to just have them all done. And then my intent <laughs> was to start this right after Christmas and have it done before the new year. But I think I got done with it on like the sixth or seventh. It did knit really, really, really fast, but it was just busy. So that was um, devoured nut number one. <laughs> devoured nut number two is still wet. It's in a towel. Um, I've still been working on Mike's sweater, but um, it's so teeny tiny and it's a little tedious. So I needed to break up the monotony. And I did the Harriet's <laughs> cowl. It came out a little bigger than I expected. I wore it today unblocked because I just wanted to wear it. Um, and it's a little bigger than I expected, a little um, wide this way and this way. Um, it's a little big for my head. Um, that could be a gauging thing. I thought I got gauge, but um, I think if I knit it again, I will definitely go down a needle. And I will probably omit some stitches here and some stitches in like this section on each side, just to make it not quite so wide, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The, yes. um, the yarn is Morehouse Farm. Um, we got this yarn as a kit and Julie and I split it. I think there was a piece of popcorn on that. <laughs> uh, Julie and I split the kit so we could each make a cowl. And this is how I decided to orient my colors. And they're gorgeous. Mm. And it smells all sheepy because mm. it's it's still oh, wet. Oh yeah, mm. it smells <laughs> sheepy. Um, so yeah, that was just to break up my monotony of making um, Mike's sweater on size three needles. <laughs> um, but that was that's it. That's all I have for FOS or devoured nuts, mixed nuts, whips. What you got for whips, Jules? Whip. Mm -hmm. She's whip. working on it. Yep. <clears throat> um, this is the Weekender. I've started my Weekender um, by Andrea Mallory. Yes. Um, it's Malabrigo. Um, actually, I got the skein. Malabrigo yarn. Rios, I believe. <clears throat> there it is. Yep. Malabrigo Rios in the colorway blue jean. That's a gorgeous blue. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I know. I flipped, <laughs> you have flipped the camera. I flipped the camera on us because like the power cord. All right, there we go. Malbrigo, <laughs> and it really is. It's a, it's a blue jean blue. Oh gosh, it's, it's so, so pretty. pretty. And I've probably had this yarn, um, probably at least two years, maybe three. <laughs> I can't remember how long now. Um, in a project bag, all ready to go with the pattern and everything I need to do it. And I just decided I want to wear this sweater this winter. Nice. So it kind of skipped up in the queue, moved to the front of the project <laughs> bag line. And I can't tell I'm you going. how many times I shuffle my queue in a week. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I usually don't move it. But I just said, oh, nope, I'm I've, I've got to do it. I'm trying to stay alpha Ravelry for a while. I'm on I'm a not Ravelry on it diet. As much. <laughs> I'm not on it as much. But there are a handful of designers <laughs> that if they post something on Instagram, I'm going to Ravelry. I know. I know. <laughs> yep. I have been um, obsessing with Jen Stein gas. Oh, I know. 
patterns lately. Oh yes, and she, you saw what she just posted today. No, I haven't been on Instagram at all today. I've been too busy. Everybody go check it out. <gasps> I think it's for the weekend. 30% off all her patterns. Shut the front door. Yup. You shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> you should not have told me that. Yeah, no code needed. <laughs> Great. And let's see. Well, who's the other one? Oh, Suki Mountain. T-Z-U-K-I, Suki mm -hmm. Mountain. Um, I'll, I'll talk about what she's got when I oh. talk later. Okay. <laughs> Intriguing. Yes. If you hear Alex Trebek, it, my husband has come inside and he's watching Jeopardy. <clears throat> um, what else you got for what's Julie? Um, oh. After this one is going to be a Ziggy, I believe. I need to finish up Ziggy. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Maybe I'll cast a Ziggy on with you. Because I've got that mm. Ziggy that I'm going to make as a gift. Oh, yeah. There you I, go. I got all that yarn at... Um, what's that place in... In where? Leah's, Leah's store in New York. That's in the back of the hardware store. Oh. Uh, uh, we'll we post it here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a bunch of yarn there. Um... To make a Ziggy in like a purple color. Yes. Yep. And so maybe I'll cast that on and then we'll do it together. Mm. All right. Mm. You'll beat me, of course. <laughs> Even though I'm halfway done with my Ziggy, you'll still beat me. <laughs> I'll, I'll only, I'll leave it home. I won't take it to work. I'll take a pair of socks to work. You're going to give me a handicap on that. Okay. <laughs> it's like bowling and racing. <laughs> golf. <laughs> golf. <laughs> Nick golf. <laughs> <laughs> oh darn! What else? <laughs> what else are doing? Well, Philomena is still back there. We'll talk about her when we get moldy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because <laughs> I got some moldy news. <laughs> whip. The only whip that I have is this. <clears throat> Mike's sweater. Um, this was supposed to be a Christmas gift, but it just didn't make it. But it's I, getting so much closer. It is. I didn't realize how like how hard it was going to be because black yarn it's a dark oh. yarn um the ribbing is a size one needle and the rest <laughs> of the sweater is a size three so ridiculously teeny tiny and that was supposed to be a dk yarn right yeah <laughs> yeah so this is the back this is the front this is a sleeve got really long sleeves. I'm a little I'm a little scared of the sleeves. You can always But can it's always it's a shoulder up. too. Like it goes up to here. Oh gosh, yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. that's not bad. No. All right. And it's always cool when you have a ribbed cuff and you can fold it back one fold if you it, want push to. it whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um so I just I just needed a break from it. <laughs> um so I told myself if, if I finished a sleeve, I could do the Harriet uh headband. So I did. So now I'm starting on the other sleeve. And there are those little tiny pick of needles. Um, but we're going to get it done. So that's my that's my one and only whip at the moment. In your? Oh, in my, yes. <laughs> this is, find the tag. This is my beautiful sister's bag. Beautiful, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> beautiful sister's. We'll give a warning there. I know. <laughs> Seatbelt. <laughs> yep. There's their info. Um, I got this in Rhinebeck as well. Mm -hmm. Began my project bag obsession. <laughs> Beautiful bag. I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's you were ahead of your time because this is hot for 2020. The buffalo plaid? Buffalo plaid. I yep. love buffalo plaid. <laughs> I love it. I got a little... um like a wrist bag too that matches it. I wish I'd gotten a little notions pouch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have a website. <clears throat> they got a tag right on the Stop! back. Stop! <laughs> Stop! I'll tell you. Should I'll tell you later. That? Okay. I'll tell you. Yeah. Cause we'll do, we're going to do like goals or resolutions at the end of the podcast. But uh, so I'll talk about that later. Um, oh, I love that. Smells like Jamie. <laughs> we 
got a podcast about that. We did. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally got Robin addicted to, to Jamie. Oh, did you? Yes. <laughs> yes. She, she, she got some herself. So oh, nice. That's yummy. <laughs> um, so that's it for whips, eh? Yes. Um, it's not really a whip, but something I'm working on. Um, I had a bunch of cotton yarn gifted to me at Netty Spa last year, and it was gifted. I didn't realize it at the time until I got it home. There's a, a um, story inside. Um, it was gifted by the family and friends of a woman named Sherry. Um, she was big in the knitting community, fiber community in that area, and <clears throat> big... Uh, promoter of Netty Spa, I guess, mm -hmm. and uh, she passed away, and sh her friends and family were gifting her stash to people at Netty Spa, which was totally amazing. incredible, <laughs> absolutely amazing. Um, I think you got some fiber, right? Yes. Because you're a spinner, and I'm not. Yep. <laughs> um, so I got this big bag, eight skeins of white cotton um, Dahlgren yarn, mm -hmm. And I decided I would dye, try my hand at um, dyeing yarn. And of course, I'm going to do the, the most difficult yarn possible, cotton, right? To start right off with. <laughs> um, so I did dye that um, today, actually. Um, I'm not sure about how. It's, it's soaking in vinegar right now, so we'll see when I rinse it, whether I like it. So what, I, what I'm going to do... She thinks it's fine. I'm skeptical. Um, I'm going to gift the yarn back. I was going to make a project out of it, but I decided I'm going to gift the yarn dyed. So it was gifted to me white, and I'm gifting it dyed to somebody else. Um, of the hopes of maybe they'll they'll make something of it and gift it, and we'll just keep like <laughs> going on and on. Um, and carrying Sherry's memory. So that's kind of a whip. That's yep. now an FO once I drain it and dry it. But I'll post I'll post pictures of it if I ever get it done before this airs. Um that's it for whips for me. Frogged, chopped nuts. Do you frog anything? No, but I have a soon-to-be frogged. Oh, what are you frogging? <laughs> my Rhinebeck sweater. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's right. You told me about that. I can't believe that. I know that beautiful hohe that rode in the back of my Prius on blocking mats. You're really gonna pull her apart. I really am. I just it fits. It's fine, but it's not, it's not bringing me joy. <laughs> I can, I can appreciate that. All right. We went through it with this, right? Yes. 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 I did the same thing with this. I, I had to tear her apart once. Yeah. I really, I think, <clears throat> because when I looked at the pattern and figured out what size and how much ease it was saying and everything, I didn't think I would want that much ease, so I chose a size that I thought I would want. Mm -hmm. But I think I would have liked it if I'd have just gone with what she said. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Same with this. Like, I'm I'm the opposite end of the spectrum. I added too much ease. I thought, okay, well, you know, this. I'm a 46 bus measurement. She says. 10 positive ease. I'll go up to like 10 and it was like 15 actually, I think is what I ended up doing. I went up a size and then 10. Yeah, it was way too big. Yeah. So mine, I think just frog it oh. and do that next size. I think, and I've got, I've got plenty of the yarn, so I certainly can do it. I just want to be very happy with it. And I think yeah. I will be in one size up. That that went up that knit up pretty quick for oh, you. Oh yeah, and uh, you're you is, you're faster now too than yeah. you than you were than when you then. did that. Yeah, this is worsted, but 
the, it was a, I want to say Barocco, Cotolana is what it was. Yeah. Um, and it actually is a worsted yarn too, but it's, it's bigger than this one because it's a, like a hollow fill. Mm -hmm. It's got almost that chain at construction where the fiber is blown into it. Mm -hmm. So it's very puffy. Mm -hmm. um, so I think even though they're the same weight of yarn, they knit up. The other knitted Different. up much faster. I yeah. Think. Yeah. This is going fine, but the other knitted up much faster than this even. So. Yeah. So you'll get it done. Yep. It'll be fine. So are you going to do that, try to get that done for this winter, or are you going to do that? I don't think it will get done this winter, um, but the yarn is also lofty enough that I think it's going to be fine for a spring sweater. Yeah. So if I get it done and get to wear it in the spring, that'll be great. Yep. It's nice springy colors, that, la that lilac color. Yep. <clears throat> I had my daughter try, had Cassie try it, because I thought, oh, well, it would be a nice boxy sweater for her. Mm-hmm. Um, she just wasn't so thrilled with the colors. They just weren't yeah. her colors. Yeah. So if I didn't have someone else that could wear it in that size and just make me another, I'm just going to frog that one. And yeah. Redo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when if you're going to spend that much time and effort on I want to be very sweater, happy with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. That's why I ripped this one out because yeah. I wanted to wear it. I love I love the yarn, I love the pattern, and I wanted to wear it. And mm -hmm. I just, I knew I would not wear it huge. Yeah. <laughs> it was huge. And I do, I, I have worn the sweater, but I, I just feel a little too self-conscious in it. Mm -hmm. it, it. It's more, it's not snug, but it's more form-fitting than what it was intended to be. Yeah. And I just like the look of what it's intended to be. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> Not everything works out perfect all the time. <laughs> yep. My um fern and feather, I am very seriously considering taking oh, out the yes. ribbing yep. because the sleeves are just a wee bit short. So I think I'm going to take the ribbing out, um, knit that yarn that's left, um, and then I have some leftover yarn of that and do the ribbing. Yeah, because you didn't go down a needle size, so you wanted a different yeah ribbing, I forgot right? to I forgot to go down I did that on this too I didn't go down it I, for, that looks I fine, always yeah. forget to go down <laughs> the needle size on the ribbing um so I didn't go down a needle size and it's a little short so mm -hmm. I think if I if I rip out the ribbing knit that yarn and then start another skein or, or my leftover skeins of yarn and do the ribbing in the, smaller in the smaller the correct smaller you know it'll be longer the longer length that I like because I like, <clears throat> I love this sweater. I absolutely love it. But it's just a little short. Mm. I always have to wear a turtleneck and pull the turtleneck yep. sleeves out. That's one thing I like about hand knits. You I can mean, do that. You can do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yep. if you <clears throat> get something, you know, purchased, made by machine or whatever, it's, I mean, like the sweater. I love this sweater. It's not wool. It's cotton, but it's almost a double knit. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to adapt that, like the sleeves are a little short. If I wanted to adapt that, how in the world am yeah. I going to do that? Yep. <laughs> um, frogged for me. Chopped. I chopped the panther. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> it was part of this... Um, D stash, your stash for 2019 mm -hmm. that Ann Frost did on her Instagram account, and I joined. And I was one of the things was to go through your project bags, and one of the project bags had the Panther in it, and I frogged her. <laughs> I frogged her good. Now, if they're new to our podcast, you might want to explain the Panther. Oh, oh the Panther. <laughs> it was a. Hi, Julie. <laughs> it was a feather and fan shawl knit with this. This is a like a shawl and a ball or shawl and a cake by Lion Brand. And it's a it's a neat yarn. It's kind of got this it's got a halo to it. Yeah. Um, and beautiful colors. I love the colors. Mm. But when I started this, 
I was new to the whole... I was re-acclimating myself to knitting. <laughs> and you hadn't done lace before, I'd had you? never done lace. I'd never done feather and fan. And my feather and fan was a hot mess. <laughs> An absolute hot mess. Um, so I decided... I, I had hibernated it for a while, put it in timeout, and I finally just decided... If I'm not going to rescue it, I'm going to frog it and start it again. Um, I will start it again because I love that yarn and I do like the feather and fan look. I just have to do it right now that I know <laughs> how to do it. Right? I'll do it. So that was frogged. Um, what else got frogged? I feel like there was something else in one of those bags. Oh, no. Um, didn't get frogged. Oh, I don't have it. It's at work. Oh, nice. It's actually another FO. Um, Herb Garden Shawl. I did it with a... Oh, I don't... No, I don't have it. Um, I did it with a Lion Brand Homespun, like a peachy colored. It was called... The color wave was called Calypso. And um, it was the most boring knit. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically... It was a cleansing knit. <laughs> it was mind-numbing. <laughs> it was good, like, sit on the couch, watch telly, I don't want to think, knit, because you didn't have to. It was basically, and it's a free pattern, so I can tell, I can say it. It was basically knit one, yarn over, knit to the end. Knit one, yarn over, knit to the end. Back and forth, back and forth. It was boring. But it knit up to a nice, dense... Um, nice shawl. Um, and I put it in the bottom of my desk at work. So in the summer, I get really, really cold with the mm -hmm. air conditioning. So it's just something that I can throw over my, over my shoulders and keep warm during the summer. <clears throat> so I'll post a picture of it because I did take pictures for Ravelry. So mm -hmm. I'll show a picture in here. Um, and that's it. No more frogged for me. I forgot about that one. That was an echo on the frog, but. <laughs> um, new buys, gathered nuts. What do you got new buys, Julie? I don't have any new buys. No new buys? No new buys. Well, new acquisitions. I have new acquisitions. <laughs> let's, yes, let's, you do have acquisitions. So. I have acquisitions, because I don't think I showed them. I'm, I'm sure I didn't show them last time. This? Yeah. No, you no. didn't. Okay. No, I know you didn't. So, fiber share. I didn't fiber bring share. all the fiber share out of the fiber box, but I had to bring the fiber out of the <laughs> fiber box. I had an awesome partner this round of fiber share. Um, she is Suki Mountain Fibers. Oh, uh, let me get it. There we go. And she sent me three gorgeous skeins mm. of her own yarn that she makes. If I can get them together here. Look at that. Look how wonderful those go together. Oh, they're perfect and together. And this is a sparkly one. Yeah. See, this, I don't think we can catch. Oh, yeah, oh, there we go. Look at that sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. Ding, ding, it's ding, not ding, very ding. clear, but it's sparkle. That one is ghostly. And it is 95% superwash merino wool, 10% lorex. Um, it's fingering weight. And what I'm not sure what that says. 411 yards for 100 grams. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm. And she hit it spot on because I said I was looking for neutrals to add to my stash and autumn colors. Nailed Bullseye. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this colorway is Hedwig. I love Isn't that one. This pretty. One. I love so pretty. It. Um, that one is an 85% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, 437 yards for 100 grams. Oh, I love it. I do. It's got some little speckles. Mm. And then I, this is a, it's like a brownish gray. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Reminds me of like campfire smoke. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this one is amber. Look at that. Burgundy in there. Yes. Oh my so god. Um, this one's also 85% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 437 yards, and 100 grams. I love her labels too. Those mm. pretty splash of color. Watercolor. Yeah. Beautiful. And 
right now, you gotta check her out, Suki Mountain on Instagram. She's having a giveaway. She's giving away a full skein and a mini skein. So, was that what you tagged me in today that I haven't mm -hmm. responded to yet? I will. <laughs> you better. <laughs> if you haven't, haven't heard of her or checked her out, you have to because she does gorgeous, gorgeous yarns. Can I, can I squish? You can squish. You can <gasps> smell. You can... Mm. <gasps> mm. <laughs> you got to smell the yarn. Yes. It's the thing. Gosh, those are so pretty. Yeah. I love how this burgundy transitions mm -hmm. into the orange. Oh, yeah. Really pretty. Yep. Really pretty. She has lovely. beautiful yarn, reasonable prices, just love it. So lovely. check her out. You'll be missing out if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Any other acquisitions? Gathered nuts for you, Julie? No. That's no? it. I've That's been it. I've been I've been good, good to girl. the budget. I've been good I've to been the a good girl too. <laughs> I really have. A lot of these were purchases that were done like around the holidays or just after the holidays, but um, I'm just getting around to showing them. <laughs> so the first one is by our beautiful Robin. <laughs> you know, we've, we've talked about Robin a lot before because we love her stuff. She is a yarn to die for right here in the great state of Maine. There's her details. And um, I'll, we'll talk about this later, but I am going, I'm doing a no spend new year, um, trying to be a little more intentional with my purchases and not get any more of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I knew that that was coming up. I knew that that was something that I wanted to do for 2020 and I'll, I'll give more details later. Um, so on the 30th of December, I placed an order with Robin. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I love her, love her stuff, mm -hmm. love her bags, love her yarn, and I'd seen this yarn. Julie had gotten this, um, and she just her, she packages her stuff yeah. so pretty. These have been just dying to get up there on the shelf with my their <laughs> friends, but I had to keep them in the bag to show them. Mm. Um, Julie got some of this, and I needed some. It's um, frosted pine cone. And it is DK weight, 100% superwash wool, approximately 240 yards and 100 grams. And it is just such a nice, mm. gorgeous, neutral, very subtle colors. Yep. And I just love it. So this is going to be really nice to go with, to combine with other things in my stash. So I've got three. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a staple. And then... I got a bag from her, my last order, um, a big project bag, and she had this notion bag in the same fabric, so I had to get a notion bag as well. <laughs> and it's so cute, so well done. All of her stuff is so well done. Mm. I love it. So notion pouch to go with my project bag. So thank you, Robin. Love, love, love. Another one that if you don't Follow yes, her on Instagram. If you don't follow her. You want to. She has great sales. I mean, her prices are good to start yeah. with, but she has great sales. Yeah, too. she does have good sales. Yeah. She's got some really cute um, painted bags with oh, little yes. gnomes on them. Yes. Oh my God, they're so, they so cute. sweet. I am so mad that I'm on a no spend new year <laughs> right now because I those bags, I'm telling you. Oh, those gnomes, you just want to print them. Yeah. We like our gnomes. Yeah. See, See Nelly. Nelly. <laughs> um, so my only other purchase was some more Lolo bars. Um, so this is Lolo Body Care. And I actually get my Lolo bars at um, barmaids.com. And I've She's become addicted. I'm. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this this started it all. Highlander. Smells like Jamie. <laughs> Smells smell <laughs> smell a vision. Um. So I got this in a small, like their little to go, uh, their little um sample sizes, 
And I decided to go with the to-go bar. They have bigger bars, but this is, I thought was perfect for mm. a little, um, little knit bag. Um, and then I got the honeydew almond in a bigger one, which is... That one smells amazing too. Mine's almost gone. Mm. Mm. They do go fast because you mm -hmm. just keep, it smells. The, but the smell really lasts. Yeah, it does. And it sticks to the yarn. Mm -hmm. Um, this one is Winter Bliss, another one of my favorites. Um, I wore this, or I wore this. <laughs> I use this, this one does open a little difficult. Um, I use this when I did my advent. Oh, yeah. The advent shawl. Yep. And it smelled Christmassy. All mm -hmm. right, so it's not going to open. There, there we go. Mmm. Ooh. Minty. It's got a minty, but kind of spicy. Not overpowering. Yeah. 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 Um, and then... Because you can, and I should, um, if you get six of the little um, samplets, what do they call them? Lola Love? <laughs> Love bars? Um, if you get six of these, you get a 10% off coupon. So I had to get six so I could get a coupon just in case I need some more, right? Just in case. <laughs> so I got Spiced Fig. I got Vixen. It's very clean but spicy. Hookah Girl, which is also very kind of. That's one of their most this is, popular, yeah, isn't it? This is a very Oh, God. You see why? Oh, yeah. It's very florally, mm. very clean and florally. It smells like Hawaii. Yes, <laughs> yes. Lemongrass. Um, pearl Knits. Honeysuckle. I love that one. And I like to get the smaller ones because that way you kind of get to try them out and you're not committed to the scent. <laughs> and then they very sweetly included a freebie, PNW Stout. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Pacific Northwest. Oh! <laughs> and it's very... Ooh, manly. Nutty. Yeah. Like a nut. nutty. Yeah. yeah. Like a nutty man. Like... <laughs> Nutty these sisters when you nutty you. Um, but what I was really impressed with, you might notice they, they look a little different than the ones that I had before. And what I was really, really, really impressed with is their new packaging. Um, it's all biodegradable. Even the little, you think these are like plastic sacks that the little loves come in. This is all 100% Sugar? Um, 100% biodegradable bag, but they're 100% <laughs> biodegradable bags, so very um, earth conscious. Yes. Conscious. The so whole baggage. I love it. So now those can finally go back on the up on the shelf with their <laughs> brothers and sisters. <laughs> Um, these weren't acquisitions or new buys, but they were gifted to not gifted to me. Um, we have a group that I work with. Uh, we knit for the veterans. We knit for um, Little Wanderers is uh, an outfit that kind of helps, you know, kids that are in need. And um, so there's all kinds of different charitable knits and crochet projects that we do throughout the year. And some of the um, projects, most of the projects we want to be very um, easy to, to care for. We want it to be acrylics and, you know, not natural fibers that might shrink or... Um, bleed or what have you. So um, I donate a lot of my acrylics there and then I'm able to take the things that um, we're not going to be using in projects. So I had taken a ball of these a while ago, or I, I was given it by the coordinator, and I was dropping off some yarn and I found another one. <laughs> so I now have two. So now that has to be a project. Um, I can go up there later. And then there was also some bags of cotton, a little bag of cotton. So this is, this is really nice cotton too. Oh, that's mercerized, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. So there was some yellow and some white and there's a project in there too. <laughs> Somebody did a finished project. So that is my only new things. And I only show you those because I'm not buying any new things anymore. <laughs> I'm being a good girl. Um, so that's gathered nuts. Moldy nuts. Julie. Oh, Philomena's still molding. Philomena's still molding. Yep. She's got a nice haze going on right now. 
<laughs> hey, she's starting to sprout trees. <laughs> there might be some lichens on it by now. <laughs> Poor thing. Will you ever finish her? Yes, I will before the yarn cruise this year. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I will. I currently have no moldy nuts. <laughs> Yay! I'm so excited. That's because I ripped them all out. <laughs> Um, yeah, I really don't. I'm looking at my bags and I don't. I don't have a single moldy nut. Good I have deal. 19 whips, but not really whips because they're not on needles. They're just in oh, bags. They're in queue. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, craved nuts. Hmm. Your dream projects. Um, Something on the horizon that you can't wait to cast on. Well, I got some Plotilope. <gasps> Mm. And it's been sitting on the shelf just driving me nuts. I want to do something with it. Yeah. I am going to have to get a little bit more if, not if, when I start the project. But Jen Steingass has um, a couple of different sweater designs with the Plotilope, as well as <clears throat> Mandarins, which is, oh, I'm going to forget her name. Mm, mm, mm. Mandarins? We'll put it here. Yeah, we'll put it down below. Anyway. She's got the forager sweater, I think it's called. Mm. And I think that one is, that one might be Let Lopey, but I think it's Plotilope. But yeah, I definitely want to do a sweater with the Plotilope. Absolutely. More ambitious than me. <laughs> Give me a good twist in my arm. And the other dream, and it's not a dream knit, is to get back on my wheel. Yeah. I need to get some more spinning time <clears throat> in. <sighs> yep been knit, knit, knitting. I need I to spin. I haven't, haven't dropped my spindle in decades. Mm. Well, this is a new decade. We can do it. I know, right? <laughs> Once I get through all my 19 projects. Yeah. I just need to maybe alternate or at least, yeah, when we talk about the Goals. Other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so my, I don't really have a dream um, or a craved project other than of the 19 projects I have up there. Actually, there's like 17 now. Of all of them, the one that I'm looking forward to casting on the most is my ale hat. Yeah. From Rhinebeck with the Rhinebeck um, Love Bus colorway. Uh, really looking forward to casting that on. And, <laughs> but then I've also been looking fondly at the shift pattern because I have mm. the shift is also up there amongst yeah. the bags um so I don't know those it's a toss-up between those two we'll see what what I'm in the mood for mm -hmm. when I finally get done with the sweater from hell <laughs> <laughs> um nut dish any prod products recommendations um Tried and loved. that I really love. No, I already talked about the highlighter tape. That's like an essential hmm. for lace for me. Books or podcasts or movies or anything? Nope. Nope. Um, I have a couple. Um, books. <laughs> Had to think. Um, Audible. I love Audible, and I found a bunch of Clara Parts books on mm. Audible. So I listened to The Yarn Whisperer while oh. I was at work, and that was so That's a good. One. Good. Yes, right. I loved it. Um, yeah, it was. I, I love listening to her. Yeah, like she's so engaging mm -hmm. when she when she reads her books. Um, so I'm now just a wee bit, like maybe 30 minutes into a stash of, a stash oh, of one's own. Yeah. I, I couldn't that believe that was on there. I had like three credits and I think I used three of them on Clara <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying that one too. Um, and just ta like, you know, talking about different, different stashes and stuff like mm -hmm. her talking about. How stashes come to be, and yeah, it's ah, just it's fun. It's, it's not fun. strategy for stash. It's, no, okay. it's kind of like um, I haven't listened to it in like a week. Mm. So, but it's kind of like um, just talking about talking about their st their stash. You mm. know, like how 
I think it's like different people. Okay, that's what I wondered. Yeah. Is it yeah. like, is it like almost like interviews of yes. different people? Yeah, with that their one's stashes? not that okay. one's not Clara like reading the book. That one's like different people talking about their stashes. Oh, ah, okay. And the differences in stashes. Hmm. Um yeah, so it was interesting just to see different people's take on um why they have the stash they have, whether hmm. it's big or small and yeah. Cool. Fun. Um, and then a couple of movies or documentaries that I've been watching that I am obsessed with. <laughs> um, there is a documentary on YouTube called Discovering Oneself with a Bowl of Temple Food. <laughs> Say that five times. Long title. Um, it's basically a group of people that go into a Buddhist monastery for, I think it's 60 days, and they live their life like a Buddhist monk, um, in training. And just like the why behind it um and it kind of ties in with my quest to try to become a minimal minimalist except for my yarn <laughs> um and it just it, it's very interesting the why behind the things that they do um and how it clears the mind and yeah so um i won't steal it it's thunder <laughs> it's a good one um, and then on Amazon, I watched, on Amazon Prime, I watched um, Kala Chakra, The Enlightenment. Um, it's a ceremony that um, the Dalai Lama allowed a camera crew in to witness and watch. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they do the mandala, ma mandala. Oh. They do a mandala on like this, this tabletop and it's with crushed stone that they oh they color they crush the stone themselves they color the stone themselves they mark out i mean the the table is completely uh, it's red and it's completely there's nothing on it and they take and like snap lines and draw out this mandala and then they take these um these like tubes and they've got ridges on them and they do this Oh, wow. And it just feeds out a little bit of the yeah. rock at a time. And it they build up this mandala oh out yeah. of this rock. Oh, my God. It was crazy incredible. And then <laughs> when the end of the, the ceremony is like, and it's like a, it's not done in a day. Let's yeah. put it that way. It's, I don't know how many days it was over. But when it's over, when this time is over, they destroy it they it's cleared they clear Ooh, the table wow. i mean it's very intentional like yes. they you know they, they take a bit of the the rock and then they you know they they go down the lines and like oh, wow. combine all the colors and then they put them in an urn they take them to a stream and they release them oh, they release wow. the, the rock back it's huh it's cool <laughs> it was really cool Sounds interesting and I just I like list, I like learning about other cultures and mm -hmm. other um, uh, you know other beliefs and and it was just it was really really neat um, so I would highly recommend that one too and that's it for me I'll shut up now <laughs> <laughs> um so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go over our 2020. Um, goals or not really resolutions, but just kind of goals or aspirations for <laughs> 2020. Julie, you want to go first or you want me to? Um, I can, I guess. All um, right. So mine, I did not get to do Anne's, Anne Frost's um, the de -stash. stash for 2019 over the holidays. It was just too hectic over the holidays. So I decided I'm going to pick that up. Got the day one started, got my boxes Best together, progress, and then a busy work week. So <laughs> this weekend, three day weekend, I'm going to try to get back on track and accomplish that because I think it's a really good um, guidance that she gives. Yeah, through it, it really said breaks really. it up step by step by yeah. step and makes There's it nothing easy too to overwhelming. It's broke down well. Yeah. Um. So I want to get through that to conquer all the knitting things get some sort of control over things which I am 
totally revamping my craft room, so I've kind of been in that process of it mm -hmm. anyway, so I don't think it's going to be a huge lift for me to get it done. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping. Um, but breaking it up into those little things will help you accomplish. Yeah. Instead of just this section and all of the things in that section, yeah. I'll be accomplishing that item. Yes. That, that like kind of things. Well, it's really, it, it's kind of a KonMari method yeah. of tidying your craft. You're knitting. <laughs> you're knitting, you're knitting some knitting stuff. Yep. Um, because her methodology is don't do it, don't declutter, don't tidy by location. Right. Tidy by item. Right. So when you're looking at your knitting stuff, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to tidy my knitting room, you're tidying your knitting items, which yeah. makes it easier. Yep. If you have all the little things tidy, then everything's tidy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, what were the, what were the, what was the, it was like 10 things, right? I think it was, it 10. was 10. It was project bags. Yep. And just to give an idea, like the project bags was, um, is it in good shape? Mm -hmm. um, if it isn't, can it be fixed in five minutes? And if it can't be fixed in five minutes, it's gone. Yeah. So you had, you know, this is great. This is wonderful. I like it and I'm keeping it. Yeah. This is great. I like it and want to keep it, but it's going to take a little repair. Stop. Do that repair on that one right there mm -hmm. so you can keep it. Mm -hmm. And if it's in too damaged condition, more than five minutes to repair, move it on. Get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the way that she she described it. You know, you, you gather all your project bags. You put yes. them all on the bed or the table or whatever, and then you go through it. So it really, you've cleared that item. Yep. Now you're sorting through it, and then you're going to find a home for it. And yep. Yeah, it was... It, it really was, is kind of KonMari for knitting. It, it is. It's KonMari <laughs> for knitting. Because then after the project bags, you moved on to patterns, right? Was it patterns I think, next? I think so. And then... And then straight needles, DPNs, and circulars. You actually broke... I thought we'd do all the needles right. together. But it, no, it's it was straights, down. DPNs, and circs. And then she did... I love the way she did the yarn. Mm. She did the yarn plant-based fiber, um, animal-based fiber, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, plant-based wool. Oh, yeah. And then synthetic. Synthetic. And I can't remember what the other two. Annie Hoozle. <laughs> if you go to, I thought, yes. I thought I know how podcast, um, Instagram, um, there is a hashtag and I'll put the hashtag here. Um, you can go to that hashtag and you'll see like all of her, um, all of the, the, the steps posts about it. And, yeah. um, I did it each day as well. So you'll actually see my post, my befores and afters. Um, but yeah. Huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yep. So once I accomplish that, then my goal is something that I wish I, I should have should have looked at the email. Um but I, I'm subscribed to an email that came and talked about um the overwhelm of whips mm. and how it, it can be depressing, you can lose yeah. your knitting mojo and all of that from an overabundance of whips. Um, so they were talking about what they called the Gideon method, which I guess it was one of their customers that it wasn't her original idea. She got it from a knit group that she was in or something, but to them, it's always going to be the Gideon method. <laughs> um, and what that one was, was to take all of your whips, project bags, whips, whatever, um, take all those whips and take five of them. Those five are the ones that you're going to focus on, and you start with one, and you knit it either till it's done or until you've spent 12 hours knitting on it. If it's done, when it's done, you move on to the next whip. If you get to 12 hours and it's not done, put it aside, move to the next one, mm -hmm. and you do that through those five projects. So you kind of rotate through your whips or... You smash those whips and get them done, and then you're on to another one. So I really think I want to tackle that because I feel like if I have too much time in one project, I will start to get bored. Yeah. Um, 
So after I accomplish the whips, <laughs> then I want to get down to having a project, probably, you know, it's probably going to be a large project, and then socks. Mm -hmm. Those be the two whips that are in I process. Get back to that. Um, socks are like my cleanse. They're mm -hmm. my easy to do, um, take a break from something else knit. So those are pretty much my goals. Uh, I'm not goaling or resolutioning or whatever, planning for the whole year. Um, that's just too, it's too overwhelming yeah. for me. I need to take a, a step or two at a time. So that's why my planner is going to get a lot more use this year. I'm going to get more intention about, intentional about using the planner. And if I'm going to fit spinning in with the knitting, I may have to block out times that normally it would be knitting time, but take a chunk of that for spinning. Mm -hmm. Plan it right mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to have like, well, I have way too many hobbies, let's be honest. <laughs> um, but I used to do like, all right, I'm going to knit this day. I'm going to do diamond painting this day. I'm going to do this, that, you know, I had, and I had to get rid of some. <laughs> <laughs> but having the planner really helped by, yeah. you know, actually putting it in writing mm -hmm. that this is a diamond painting day or this is a knitting day. And mm -hmm. I haven't diamond painted in like a oh, year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but how, you know, having, having the intention mm -hmm. of this on this day, I'm going to do this. But I've been so obsessed with knitting. Mm -hmm. It's changed from knitting this day and diamond paint to I'm going to knit this project this day. Yeah. I'm going to knit this project this day. Yeah. But yeah, I totally get your being overwhelmed with the whips thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had 19, when I went through Ian's thing, I had 19 bags. And, or 19 hangers with bags on them. And one of those hangers has three socks on them. See, three bags with socks. So yeah, just ridiculous how many projects I had and I probably still have more here I tried to pull out as I was going through my yarn I tried to pull out um yarn that was intended for certain projects and go ahead and put those in bags um but 19 is ridiculous <laughs> yeah you got me beat on that <laughs> but by going through that process I was able to finish off a couple of I was able to frog the one that I was never going to finish or wasn't going to finish where it was mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then i was able to finish up a few projects that were just like you know four or five rows away from being done yeah. um and i think i've now become more of a monogamous knitter yeah. like i i have a project i need to get it done and i i'm doing it yeah. with the exception of mike's sweater that one <laughs> needs a break in between pieces <laughs> <Yeah>. people <laughs> yeah i mean having all those projects to me it was the old adage about you know, how do you eat an elephant? One, One bite, bite at, at a time. time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So that's where I'm at. I have an elephant that I'm yep. needing to take a bite at a time and get it done. But I've I've made I've given myself a Ravelry diet. I, I do go on and update my project pages, and there's an occasion where I might peek at what's hot, but <laughs> um, I just have so many projects that I have in the works right now. Um, that I need to stop. Mm -hmm. I just need to stop and wait and get done what I have to get done. And <laughs> But our decision with the yarn for me not to make a project out of it, the cotton, mm -hmm. that has just taken one off my table. Mm -hmm. So I love that. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but my project goal, I, I did 26 projects last year. I actually have no idea what I did. <laughs> That's why you need to put your projects on Ravelry, girl. Well, I do have projects on Ravelry, yeah. I just didn't look. Oh. <laughs> click the little challenge. Challenge? No, no, no. <laughs> if you click the challenge, it'll tell, it'll, you can set your own challenge. Last year I set a challenge of 15 projects and I did 26. I don't want to set a challenge. This year I'm setting a, a challenge of 30 projects. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to put that pressure on myself. <laughs> projects. Yeah. I know. It's probably more, more self inflicted pressure than I need, but. <laughs> Um, but part, oh, I'm sorry. Are you done? Did you have more goals? Yeah. Uh, well, the only other goals yes. in using the planner more, um, you know, and planning actual blocks of time so that when I have blocks of time set, I can say, no, I'm sorry. Yes. I have this time scheduled. Yes. <laughs> you mean you're going to take me time? I am. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm, I call it me time, but I, I need to schedule Etsy shop time in there. Yeah. So, you know, yep. if I, I consider that to be work. Yes. If I schedule two hours on this day to spend on whatever I need to do for my Etsy shop, I'm working. I'm sorry. I, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, <laughs> I'm going to put her in Etsy shop right down here. <laughs> if you haven't checked her Etsy shop out, she's got some really, really cute stitch markers going right now. <laughs> really cute. <clears throat> yeah, you, you, you like did a huge update. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's Plenty. a lot. I'll bet I have 50 different kinds of stitch markers That's right crazy. now. That's crazy. That's crazy. Close to, anyway. And there will be some surprise Ooh. different items You heard coming. it here first. <laughs> Jules makes exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah. Scheduling, like, mm -hmm. I used to do, on the weekends, I used to do a, uh, I called it 30-30-30. It was when I had my LuLaRoe shop. Um, I did... 30 minutes of housework, like house cleaning. I need to do like, yeah, you know, cause when you work a full-time job, plus try to run a business, the housework doesn't always get done. <laughs> um, so I do 30 minutes of housework. I do 30 minutes devoted to the business to devoted to, um, things that need to be done with the, the, the retail business. And then I do 30 minutes of me, like whatever I want to do, whether it's diamond painting or, Knitting or reading a book or, you know, sitting and drooling because <laughs> you just did 60 minutes of hard labor. Um, but that worked really well for me. Just mm. I'd set the timer 30 minutes and I, I got to blow through it and get it done. Yeah. And I mean, 30 minutes, it, does, it doesn't even sound like a lot. So it's easy. Yep. And, and goal to accomplish. because I knew I was timed. Mm hmm. And I'm competitive. Yeah. <laughs> I do as much as I possibly could. I can do this. I can get I can get the whole kitchen done in 30 minutes. And I would. <laughs> Sometimes the alarm would go off. The um, timer would go off. And I'd be like, no, I'm in the middle of the dishes. I got to finish. <laughs> but yeah. You got to make the time. Yeah. And stick we to it. We all have 24 hours a day. It's how we use those 24 That's right. hours. That's right. <laughs> Anything else? That's enough for me for now. <laughs> <laughs> we may revisit mid-year. Um, my biggest thing, I, I'm, I fall down rabbit holes on YouTube all the time. It's ridiculous. But sometimes I grasp on a little gem while I'm down there. And I started seeing some of these no-spend challenges so I decided to try to do a no spend challenge for, I say for 2020, but I'm going to take it like a quarter of the year at a time. Yeah. Cause you got Nita Spa coming up. I know, I know, <laughs> but I'm going to be good. Um, so these are my no spend new year rules and I'm going to try to take it a quarter at a time and just see how it goes yeah. so far. So good. Um, so here, here, and with the no spend thing, the rules are your own. You, you make it up how you want to make it up. Um, and these were the rules that I came up with for myself because I have way too much yarn and I'm never going to get through it in my lifetime if I don't stop and just knit it. So, um, no new products, only replenish, replenish new products. So no more buying new lower bar. No more buying new anything. However, if I run out of some Jamie, I can get more. Because <laughs> that's replenishing, darn it. <laughs> Although I do have all of these, I can still, you know. You can make the technicalities be whatever you want yes, them to be. <laughs> they're your rules. Break them however you Jamie want. Jamie is an exception. Yes. <laughs> No, I have, I have so many lotion bar -y things like it's only things like, you know, I ran out of shampoo. I need to, I need to buy more yep. shampoo, that kind of thing. Yep. So no new products. No, nothing, nothing new just because I want to try it kind of thing. Um, no new yarn. Zip zero none. What are you going to do at Nita Spa? Neat. Knit. <laughs> I'm going to knit at Netta's <laughs> However, 
Here's my loophole. Okay. <laughs> Here's my loophole. Gift yarn is fine. Ah. So, if the hubby wants to give me a little money there you to go. go to Nitty Spa there and give me something special, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> and the reason I'm doing this is just to get my obsession in check <laughs> <laughs> and to pay for Rhinebeck. Yeah. Um, and I want to go to Rhinebeck again, yeah, so I gotta exactly. I gotta pay down last year, right? <laughs> um, stick to the budget. So I'm pretty good at budgeting, but there are moments where I'm like, okay, I have thirty dollars in the budget for gifts, but I love this person, month. and I'll make it up by not buying gifts next month. You know, just <laughs> stupid little justifications like that no stick <laughs> to the budget you know i want that cheeseburger at mcdonald's mm, nope not in the budget so just because i want it doesn't mean i gotta go get it kind of thing that's what the stick to the budget rule is um no oh, there there's the mcdonald's no eating out and no takeout <laughs> You My, just kiboshed it in two mm -hmm. <laughs> rules. <laughs> and I've been really good about that. Uh, so far, knock on wood, I've not done it. Um, I've even talked my husband out of Chinese food on one occasion so wow. far this year. Um, no takeout coffee. Wow. My daughter works at Dunkin' Donuts. You know how hard that is <laughs> to go to Dunkin' and not grab a coffee? Yeah. Ouch. But it could be gifted to you. It could be gifted to she me. She could always have a coffee ready for Yeah, um, when I, I threw a baby <laughs> shower from for our brother, and his his um, girlfriend brought me a coffee for doing the the shower. So I am I was okay with that because yeah. I didn't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no online shopping. That's harsh. Yep. I mean, that's knitting or... No, no, no. Ooh, I could not. I have to get my supplies from Amazon. <laughs> I get my tweety paper, my paper towels, and my everything nope. from Amazon. <laughs> nope. Wow. If I need it, I gotta go to the store and get it. Ooh. If I don't want to go to the store and get it, I don't need it. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Could be a long winter with no toilet paper in my house. I'm telling you what. <laughs> you wonder why I've been so scarce on Instagram lately? Cause that's a trap. Ooh. That is. A trap this is true um what else oh no stocking up so a lot of times mm. will there'll be sales especially the yeah. local there's a little local store tozer's market that has 10 for 10 <laughs> and you know when they have 10 for 10 you don't buy just two you buy 10 because <laughs> it's 10, 10 for 10, 10. <laughs> or like and this is really hard because we drink a lot of coffee and coffee's expensive mm -hmm. And when they have these deals on Folgers coffee, <laughs> I gotta grab me some. Nope. If it's not replenishing it, if it hasn't run out, I don't need it. So there's that rule. Mm -hmm. That's hard. And the hardest one of all, this is even harder than no new yarn. Only one experience per quarter. Mm -hmm. So no yarn adventures except for <clears throat> once per quarter. So I had to think this this kind of ties in with that whole deliberate and intentional yes. yeah thinking so i had to really think about what go, what goes on in the year these yarn adventures we like to go on what goes on that i really really love and i really really want to do and when does it occur how can i break it up and how do i choose so my choices were for the first quarter of the, of the year net a spa mm -hmm. That was my very first yarn adventure with you, mm -hmm. so that's got to happen. <laughs> April, May, June, second quarter of the year, yarn cruise. We caught on to that last year and... That starts in May, right? Yeah. Yeah. We loved it, so that's mm -hmm. got to happen this year. <laughs> um, July, August, September, third quarter, fiber frolic. Mm -hmm. Got to do that. Um, and then October, November, December, it's got to be Rhinebeck. Yep. So... That's the plan. <laughs> and even when I go to these excursions and adventures, I can't buy yarn. Well, you can certainly schmooze the hubby for some gift. <laughs> yeah. And I, the only reason I'm doing this is because I really want to minimize and be more intentional about yeah. my purchase. Yep. Yeah. If I get 
gift money for yarn, I'll really have to have a plan mm -hmm. because I don't know if I'll be get you know I'll, I don't know if I'll get gift money for the next quarter. Mm -hmm. So I have to be very intentional with whatever funds I have, right? And not just be like, oh, that's pretty. I'll buy it. It's got to be you know what, what do projects I need do I for? have that I want to do? Yep. And I'll really have to have an intention when I before I go that this is what I'm doing and this is what I need for it and this is what I'm looking for. That's kind of what I did for Rhinebeck. Yeah. I had a couple of sidelines. Oh, I was all sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I pretty much had a... Morehouse, that was totally like... Yeah. That blew it right out of the water. Yeah. I went nuts there. But yeah. That was fairly good. I think that's it. That's that's all my goals. 30 projects, the No Spin New Year. Um... And of those 30 projects, I'm not casting on anything new until the 19 bags that are hanging on the other side of that room <laughs> are gone. Are gone. Wow. Yep. Yep. That's it for me. You got anything else, Julie? I don't believe I do. All right. <laughs> I think we're all set then. Well, all thanks right. for joining us, you guys. We really appreciate it. Yes. Um, to follow us uh, individually on social media, where are you, Julie? I am. Oh, let me think now again. <laughs> I check my cheat notes. Okay, I'm because <laughs> I don't do myself on these things. <laughs> Jules Larrabee on Ravelry and Larrabee Julie on Instagram. <laughs> And I'm at Nana's House 15 on Ravelry and Nana's underscore House 15 on Instagram. So until next time, stay, stay nutty, nutty and, and keep knitting. knitting. Bye.